Blitzkrieg by Tyson Morlock. What is Blitzkrieg, and why was it used? Blitzkrieg means lightning war in German. It was named so because it involved surprise attacks based on speed. This tactic mainly used light tanks and infantry to cover land quickly. This tactic was developed by a German officer named Hans Guderian. He had written a pamphlet called Auction Panther, which got in the hands of Hitler. Blitzkrieg was used because Germany didn't did not want another long war like World War I. Germany's strategy was to defeat its opponents in a series of short campaigns. Germany quickly overran much of Europe and was victorious for more than two years by relying on this new tactic. How effective was Blitzkrieg? Well, in 1941, a diary kept by an unknown French soldier was found. In it are some interesting comments that help us understand why this tactic was so successful. When the dive bombers come down, they, the French, Stood it for two hours, then ran with their hands over their ears. Sedan fell as a result of a bombardment. It was a superb example of military surprise. The pace is too fast. It's the cooperation between the dive bombers and the tanks that has won the war for Germany. News that the Germans are in Amiens. This is like some ridiculous nightmare. All these quotes were written in a period of just five days. May 15, 1940 to May 19, 1940. Hitler had spent four years in World War I, fighting a static war with neither side moving far for months on end. He was enthralled by Guderian's plan that was based purely on speed and movement. When Guderian told Hitler that he could reach the French coast in weeks if an attack on France was ordered, fellow officers openly laughed at him. The German high command told Hitler that his boast was impossible. General Busk said to Guderian, Well, I don't think that you'll cross the river Moose in the first place. The River Moose was considered France's first major line of defense, and it was thought of as being impossible to cross in a battle situation. Why was Blitzkrieg so successful? Blitzkrieg was based on speed, coordination, and movement. It was designed to hit hard and move on instantly. Its aim was to create panic amongst the civilian population. A civilian population on the move can be absolute havoc for a defending army trying to get its forces to the warfront. Doubt, confusion, and rumor were sure to paralyze both the government and the defending military. Speed, and still more speed, and always speed was the secret. And that demanded adicity, more adicity, and always adicity, quoted by Major General Fuller. Armor Concentrations The dense concentration of strong firepower, the high mobility, and the survivability of rapidly advancing large groups of tanks were far more than anything seen before in any ground battlefield in history. It made cavalry totally obsolete and made infantry quite helpless in an open battlefield unless they were massively equipped with efficient anti-tank weapons which were developed only in response to Blitzkrieg and really matured only near the end of World War II. The German tank units were highly trained. Many of them were considered the elite units and provided the best soldiers and commanders. The German tanks were the first really efficient battle tanks. In addition to tanks, they were mechanized infantry units which allowed the infantry to advance together with the tanks providing them better protection from the enemy infantry and anti-tank units where they were more vulnerable to. When infantry fighting vehicles were not available, the infantry used to simply ride over the tanks. Massive precise air support. Effective precision destructiveness made possible by precise aerial bombardment left common artillery behind. Artillery was also too slow to follow the rapidly advancing tank groups. So in addition to ordinary artillery, German military was aided by a very large number of stupid dive bombers, which could quickly and efficiently destroy the enemy obstacles in the tank's way. Paratroopers were another type of air support, which could be used where key targets had to be quickly captured, not destroyed. One of the common tasks in Blitzkrieg was capturing key bridges in order to prevent the enemy from destroying them and allow the advancing tanks to reach them and rapidly cross them without delay. Radio while the French high command in 1940 was not even equipped with radio, there was radio communications in each tank, each aircraft, and each unit which allowed the German commanders to control their forces so effectively, and to utilize their air support so destructively and efficiently. Radio allowed German Blitzkrieg commanders to rapidly advance with their forces, see the battlefield with their eyes, not just on the map, and achieve much greater control of the situation and much better use of their forces. Radio also enabled the German senior commanders to efficiently control huge mobile forces, more than ever before in history allowing large-scale cooperation and effective unity of command. Flexibility The German armor commander didn't have to follow a particular road or path. 
Their tactical freedom, provided by their superior mobility and quick response air support, allowed them to rapidly advance along the path of least resistance. This allowed them to press on with little casualties, allowing them to maintain their thrust and effectiveness and advance further. Initiative and Surprise The sheer speed and power of rapidly advancing forces in the heavy bombardment in this territory, especially when it comes without warning, can easily shock every enemy. Persisting with that is even more devastating. That's what the Germans did. They rapidly encircled massive enemy forces, cut supply lines, and made other large units collapse and lose their morale. Simplicity There is nothing complex in Blitzkrieg. It was a simple tactic and made possible thanks to revolutionary modern weapons which made this type of warfare possible. The tank, the aircraft, and the radio. As with many other weapons and tactics, it could be greatly intensified with quality, and indeed with cavalry-spirited commanders like Guderian and Rommel, with highly trained or combat experienced soldiers. And with excellent weapons as the Panzer IV and the Stuka dive bombers, the Germans were able to achieve amazing victories in, with Blitzkrieg. Later during the war, the Germans were eventually matched by equal armored commanders like Patton and Zhukov. Their tanks were outclassed by the Russian T-34, which was perhaps the best tank in World War II. The Stuka dive bomber was matched by a superb tactical support aircraft like the Russian I-12 Sturmovik, which was the most armored aircraft in World War II, and later by a new breed of American and British multi-role fighter bombers. Air Security is a supporting element, but a critical one. If the enemy has it, Blitzkrieg becomes impossible, as Rommel and the other German commanders found out later during the war. During the invasion of Poland in September 1939, it became clear that the Panzer I was insufficiently armed for battle conditions. Panzer II and Panzer III th tanks were liable, but were outgunned. The outstanding performer was Panzer IV, as it had the perfect combination of speed, agility, firepower, and reliability. Over the next few years, it became the backbone of Blitzkrieg, and over 9,000 of these tanks were produced. However, the successful resistance of the Red Army in the Soviet Union in 1942 showed the Panzer IV was no longer invincible. This resulted in the production of the Panther, and eventually became the most popular tank used in Germany. The greatest exponents of Blitzkrieg were the German commanders Hans Guderian and Erwin Rommel. Once a strategic target had been selected, Suka dive bombers were sent in to soften up the enemy, destroying all rail lines, communication centers, and major rail links. This was done as the German tanks were approaching and the planes withdrew only at the last minute so that the enemy did not have time to recover their senses when the tanks attacked, supported by infantry. In 1939, Blitzkrieg defeated the Polish army, which had obsolete cavalry instead of tanks and obsolete air force. In 1940, it defeated the French army, which had necessary weapons such as tanks, aircraft, and radio, but of lesser quality, and didn't know how to use it because they totally neglected mobile warfare after World War I and didn't have fighting security either. In 1941, it also defeated the huge Russian army all the way to Moscow, but because of the logistic neglect, it was defeated by Russia's endless size and extreme weather. In 1941, it defeated the Yugoslav and the Greek armies, which had the fighting spirit but not the needed weapons for mobile warfare. In 1944, in France, Patton demonstrated American-style blitzkrieg with levels of air support and mobile logistics beyond Guardian's wildest dreams. At the end of 1944, the Germans tried Blitzkrieg one last time, almost at the same place as they did in 1940, but this time just a shadow of their past Blitzkrieg. They had much less tanks, their formidable King Tiger tanks were very short in fuel, they had almost no air support, and they were totally dependent on the bad weather to avoid being decimated by the Allied fighter bombers. They advanced, but not significantly, and when the sky finally cleared, they were smashed by the Allied fighter bombers.